Yo guys, I got a spark so I'm going to use to ignite the fire for a brand new episode of Schooled for Game Show where I take the battle classes from Scarlet Smash Nators as a theme and utilize that to create a whole new video. So today we're going to be talking about the two crucial things which go into making a Scarlet who they are, both their element and their battle class. That's right. It's the correlation between those two things which makes up a Skander and makes up who they are. So no doubt that raises the question, what the heck is a correlation? Well, because I'm a nice guy, I'm going to go on ahead and tell you, which means you're currently being schooled. The definition of correlation means a mutual relationship or connection between two or more things. And by mutual, it means that each part within the relationship is benefiting from one another. With that definition out of the way, we're going to be um, looking towards the purpose of this episode of Schooled, which just so happens to be about the correlation between battle classes and elements it's in it of itself, you could say. So it asks the key question, does a certain element lend itself to a certain battle class quite nicely? I.e. is it easy to put certain elements into certain ba battle classes? This table before you compiles the number of each correlation from every Skarner explored in the Schooled series thus far. Where the table is highlighted, it shows that there are the greatest number of elements which correlate with a certain battle class and vice versa. I.e. if there are four Fire Knights in comparison to three Water Knights, not to mention there are no other battle classes with more than four Fire Skarners in them, making it so that Fire correlates with the Knight class more frequently, Proving that Fire Elemental characters uh, easily lend themselves to the Knight Battle class, and we're going to explain that more in depth as well as every other correlation which is highlighted on the table below so we can see what makes um, these elements lent out to these battle classes so easily. Starting with magic, it's pretty obvious as to the main battle class that this element would lend itself to quite well, and that's the sorcerer class, since most of them use staff to magically conjure weapons and allies, and the grand majority of magical beings are sorcerers, since sorcerers' abilities are quite magical. You can't have one without the other, therefore... Many of them are going to fit into the Sorcerer's class quite naturally, indeed. Next up is Earth, which lends itself to the Smasher class quite nicely, because the Earth itself is pretty hard. And Earth Skanders are all about pounding the Earth to manipulate it in some way. Therefore, they must be able to pound it pretty hard. And that mindset and strength correlating together is really what makes um, the Smasher class traits so distinguishable. And it's really what allows the Earth to distinguish themselves as that class because of said traits going two in two, you could say. Next up is the Water Element, which features three characters from both the Ninja and Brawler battle classes, so we'll leave Brawlers for later, but for now I feel as though Water Skarners lend themselves to be ninjas much more. Because, first and foremost, there are creatures of the sea called Starfish, and they resemble the shape of a throwing star, a typical weapon for an ninja mind you. So starfish weaponry was inevitable for a water scanner, which is why Lobstar himself was introduced, uh, mind you. And it didn't come as much of a shock when said introduction occurred. But what makes other Skarners so fitting of a ninja class is the fact that oceans are pretty vast and spacious, giving you plenty of space to train to become sneaky. And ice can also form to make very ninja-esque weapons as well. And since the traits of ice is the fact that it's quite light and pretty fast, it makes them ideal to throw and surprise enemies with. And ice is, of course, another trait of water element since ice is simply uh, frozen water. So the fact that ice is such an ideal ninja weaponry once again means that the water scar lend itself to the ninja class quite well indeed. 
We'll move on to fire later, so for now we're going to look at the tech element which fits itself inside of quick shot class six times over, making it the second most frequent correlation right behind magic, sorcer uh, magic sorceress themselves even. So I think tech lends itself to the quick shot class so well because technology can craft w weaponry which is both fast and accurate with weapons that have low cooldown and automatic targeting. Uh, all thanks to the technologies they helm, and all of which are quick shot skills, therefore they do indeed l lend themselves to that battle class quite well. We now move on to the Undead Element, which coincidentally also has six characters within its brawler class, mind you. But really, I feel like what makes Undead such great brawlers is their personality traits. Brawlers like to, shall we say, play with their food. But in the case of um, Skanders, rather than food, it's enemies. And this toying around with their enemies means that they don't really care too much about enemies uh, getting close to them. In fact, they kind of welcome the idea so that then they can brawl with them and uh, tra uh, trap them in their own combos, mind you, you could say. And that's exactly what Undead is great at. The Undead love toying with the living, you could say. And they're also really great at creating combos of their own and trapping uh, the living in towards their combos. And it's not like they're scared of melee encounters because they're already dead, so how uh, can be, how can they be any more dead? Therefore, the undead, based on their personality traits, would fit into the uh, brawler class quite frequently indeed. Moving straight along to the life element, the battle class they tend to lend themselves quite well to is the bazooka class. And I feel like this is because when you create a huge uh, bazooka type weapon which launches food, bees or plants alike, it would seem quite realistic for that weapon to do so due to its size and design. So all I'm saying here is that life um, like material to fire would be pretty difficult if it weren't for the fact that their weaponry was giant and destructive like the bazookas that all of the characters before you happen to helm. Now we're going to talk about the three remaining elements with no real uh, frequent correlations, that being for the light, for dark and the air elements. Starting with light and dark, there are very few characters in these elements, uh, and because there's literally only three of them before Imaginators was introduced, they haven't really been given for numbers to showcase a number of different weapons and skills that the elements can possess, and as such haven't really been given the chance to fall into a pattern you could say. As for air, it's a very vague element more so than the others. It doesn't really lend itself to a single battle class quite well since any personality trait or any weapon can be given to an air skander and it just works because of how vast and full of potential the air can be. So basically what I'm saying here is that what makes the air element so great is that it's so varied. But now we're going to move on to fire without further ado. Last but most certainly not least, we have fire, and the main reason why I left this element for last is because I really wanted to leave the best element for last, uh, you could say. But regardless, fire quite clearly lends itself to knights very well, since fire characters utilise a lot of armour, which is the aesthetics of a knight. And flaming swords look pretty damn awesome, so I couldn't blame um, the designers of these characters utilising such fire-based weaponry. Again, another trait of the knight uh, class, you could say. And finally, fire skanders all have a similar type personality. They all love being noble and battle in their own unique ways, making them a perfect fit for the knight class indeed. However, that basically does it for this episode of Schooled. So I want to thank you all for watching, and I'll be seeing you in the next episode when Tornet Moment arises. Peace.